Hey there, congratulations. You have just made the greatest decision you can ever make in your life. And that is for you to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. In this very journey, we will commit to four essential disciplines towards Christian growth. First, we will commit to come to the Lord regularly in prayer and in His Word, the Bible. It is through that that we commune with God, we hear from God, and that we continue to just grow in this relationship with God. Second, we will commit not just to know things about God, but to actually follow. Following calls for obedience. We will know what God desires for us to know. We will know what God desires for us to do, and we will obey. We will take intentional steps of obedience towards you know, growing in the faith that He called us to grow. Third, we will commit to train others to do the same very same things. We will train others how to share about Jesus to their family, to their friends, and to people around them in work or in school. Then we will also train them how to grow in this relationship with the Lord in prayer and Bible study. We will also help them, train them to obey everything that we are learning along the way. Fourth, we will also commit to join God in what He's doing around us. See, the Lord is not just working in our lives and in the lives of people who are now just like us, followers of Jesus, but He's also working out there in our very own neighborhoods, in our very own community, in our very own city, all around the world. And we will commit to be sensitive to where He is moving and working and join Him there. See, we're all called to be ambassadors for God. In whatever place, whatever context, whatever situation there is, you and me are given this wonderful opportunity to share His love, His word, His truth to the world around us. So, as we begin, let me introduce you to the Bible. The Bible here is God's Word. Now, I'll make a separate video to help you get started in studying the Bible. But today, I would like to establish some basic understanding of what the Bible is and what the Bible is for so that you will understand and see the benefit there is for you to just be taking time to be serious about God's Word. I would like to start by reading 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Now, what does it say about the Bible? It says, all Scripture. That's the Bible. All of what we hold here. All of Scripture is inspired by God. It's something that God enabled to be and to come into being using people, but He inspired them. And see, the Bible itself is profitable for teaching. It's also for proof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man or the woman of God may be adequate equipped for every good work. And so see, we thank God for the Bible. It is God Himself who made His very Word available for you and for me even until today. And I would like to read what's a, a person, a, a psalmist, a, a person who has experienced you know, God's Word firsthand in his life. And he records that in Scripture and these are the words he has to say. It's found in Psalm chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7 to 11. Okay? Now, for some of you, you might not really find that easy to flip on the pages of the Bible. Maybe, maybe you're not really familiar with where to find things yet. But that's okay. But see, for a start, why don't you just hear what Psalm chapter 19 Verse 7 to 11 has to say, 
it says this about the word of God. The law of the Lord. The law of the Lord. That's the same thing as scripture or God's word or the Bible. So the law of the Lord is perfect. Restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous all together. They are more desirable than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, it says, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. In keeping them there is great reward. See, as we take time to be serious coming to the Lord from day to day in His Word, there is profit to it there's some form of reward to it there's some form of benefit to it and so i encourage you to take god's word really seriously let's take baby steps and take it one day at a time but see the important thing is that we understand there's no way to go about it but to really be serious about god's word what have we learned so far it says here first verse we've read a while ago it says the law of the Lord is perfect the law of the Lord is perfect it means God's Word is perfect there's no error to it and there's no evil intention to it it is perfect for our very own souls for our very own lives it is perfect to bring about the benefit the promise the restoration that God desires for us to experience. Now let's talk about something very, very practical and true in life. You think life doesn't have its share of troubles and problems? Definitely, we will still have our own share of difficulties and hardships and challenges and problems. And see, where do you go? Where do you go to? When you experience such concerns and some difficulty in life, well, perhaps some of us would go to some books someplace else, some self-help books. Some of us would perhaps go to our uh, f favorite uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you know, some channels there offer some great advice. But see, there's no other place as what we have read a while ago that is there perfect for correction perfect for teaching, perfect for rebuke, perfect for encouragement, perfect for inspiration and guidance through life, except that which is of God's Word. And that's what the Bible says. God inspired this and made this come into existence, into being, for the purpose of helping you and me in a perfect way, in a flawless way, in a way that has no evil intentions to it and says God says here's my word take hold of my word and be familiar with my word and so that's what we're gonna do from day to day we're gonna know God and know his heart and know his mind know his ways and you know and begin to see life from that perspective and there we would see how God desires for us to see things and see events, see people, see experiences. And there we will experience His very own comfort, His very own guidance, His very own you know, uh, promise of making such a life equipped for every good work. And so that's one thing we learn from, from this passage today, that the Word of God is perfect. But another thing we can see here is that the Word of God transforms us. 
You see, as we are, God loves us as we are. His grace abounds, you know, in spite of our own inabilities, in spite of our own imperfections, God's love abounds. And yet, wonderful thing about His love is that His love is so great that He desires that we improve and we become better people. People who will not just be, you know, subject to all the ills and difficulties and challenges of life, but people who will become victorious, who will become overcomers, people who will not just settle for the, the lesser things of life, people instead, who, we should be people who will pur purposely pursue His purposes, His desires for our lives, because there's so much more to that. You know, there's so much more to life than just whatever we see there in our own inabilities. And so, he says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. And so he tells us here that the Word of God, you know, uh, transforms us. There's something that God does to us, you know. He makes wise the simple. He makes wise the foolish. He makes wise you know, the ignorant. And that's what God desires for you and for me to experience. That we will be transformed into people who will begin to see things from His vantage point and see life, our lives, see circumstances, see events, see other people, and begin to see them from His vantage point. And so, as we begin to have a renewed understanding of ourselves, renewed understanding of others, renewed understanding of events, it begins to change us from the inside out. It begins to make us new uh, persons, so to speak. But see, there's a challenge there for us to take His Word seriously. As He teaches us from His Word, uh, He says, we, we begin to have the, the wisdom to do what we're supposed to be doing. And so it is through His Word that we begin to see that. But unless we, we, we realign our thinking, unless we realign our lives by doing what it says, you know, by, by, by obeying, then there's not much transformation that's going to happen there. That is why... God says in another passage in Scripture, in James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. He says there, Prove yourselves doers of the word, and not merely hearers who delude themselves or make a fool of themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, once you hear it, once you can see it, but you're not a doer. He is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. And then as he sees himself in the mirror, for once he has looked at himself and then he has gone away. He has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law or about the Bible, you know, the law of liberty and the and abides by it, he says, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. See, the Word of God is there for us to show us what life is all about and what God desires for us to do in life. The Word of God is also there to show us more about ourselves more of our uh, wrongdoings, perhaps, and the things that should not be there and should not be done so that our lives will not be a waste. And it is that important that we don't just get to see it as like, oh, okay, but we get to do something about what we see. See, that's why we said a while back, we will be not just 
communing with God in prayer and His Word and just be knowing information, we will also commit to that second essential discipline and that is to follow Him. Because it's only as we follow God, it's only as we obey Him and do what He says should be done and stop doing what He says should be stopped, then there's not much transformation that's really going to be experienced there in our lives. See? And so, uh, Psalm chapter 19 verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect. There's no flaw to it. There's no error to it. Instead, it restores the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. It's making wise the simple. It enables us to see things from His perspective. See? Uh, before I forget, see, in the Bible, there's so much in the Bible, but to name a few, in the Bible we will always see a, a particular thing, a particular deed we call sin, you know, something that's not right, something that's not supposed to be done, that needs to, we need to avoid. We got to know that and we got to begin to do that, right? But we will also see promises from God in His Word. Promises that they're there to help us in this life, either to encourage us, to inspire us, to motivate us. Promises that are true and will surely come to pass if we take them seriously. You know, uh, part of such promises are blessings that we can claim and receive from the Lord. You see, and such a thing is very important in this very journey because He helps us to understand these things. But see, again, as we say, it starts with the mind. We understand that, but it should come down to our hearts and bring that conviction to say, this is God's word. This is something serious that I'd like to take hold of, believe in it, and do something about it. We follow him and we obey him. What does Psalm chapter 19, verse 8, tell us? It says, the precepts of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart see the word of the lord or the word of god is right how can you ever go wrong when you follow and take hold of what is right god's word is made available for us in a world that is filled with so much error and so much confusion and so much uh, limited knowledge. But his word is ready, available for us. That if we just take His word seriously, then we will never go wrong. Because the precepts of the Lord are right. In fact, it says here that it rejoices the heart. It rejoices the heart. See? So God's word is right also is able to make us happy if we just take it seriously obey it and follow it see that's why it is very important hear me it is very important that as we go through our daily journey and habit of coming to the lord in prayer of really coming seriously to his word that we come with an open mind Believing His Word is right. An open heart, believing that His Word is perfect, restoring the soul. And we take in from the Lord, we receive from the Lord, not just information, but really a precious Word, a powerful Word that is able to bring about transformation. A transformation that brings happiness and joy. It rejoices each of our hearts. And that is why it is encouraged for you and for me to really take his word seriously. Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11 verse 28 reflects Jesus' very own words. Jesus said, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. See, blessed or happy. Happy are those people who don't just look at scripture and say like, oh, okay, that's wonderful. Oh, that's an added knowledge there. But see, he says, blessed are those who hear the word, who receive the word, and then begin to 
observe it or begin to do it and practice it. And that is where we call the need for discipleship, for mentoring, and a, a relation, relationship of accountability, of having somebody there to really help you not just understand God's word, but somehow help you get to be accountable. You know, people who will check on you and see how you're doing with God's word. Not just in understanding it, but really applying what God says in his word. But the, the benefits there is, is just amazing. Look at Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1 tells us how blessed or how happy is a man who takes God's word seriously by not just knowing it, but doing it. See, it says, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But here, listen. But his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. That his delight is in the law of the Lord. That he desires to hear from the Lord and, and, and learn from the Lord far more than hearing some other wise idea from some other friends out there or some other people, some great guru out there. He says like, wow, there's nothing that compares to God's word. And so what does he do? He, and in his law, in God's law, he meditates day and night. See the, the importance of the discipline of Bible study daily, regularly coming to the Lord in prayer and just opening our hearts and say, Lord, teach me today from your word. And as we, we hear from the Lord, we meditate on those words. And like, wow, we think about those words the whole day and we, we just savor his words in our own lives and hold on to it and begin to see life from that vantage point. And so what does the psalmist say? He says, he will be like a, a tree firmly planted by streams of water. A tree that is firmly planted alongside streams of water where it begins to get nourishment. It begins to get life. And so what happens to the tree? It yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, here's a promise here, whatever he does, whatever she does, scripture says, prospers. Wow. Whatever you and me endeavor to be doing in life, whether in the midst of plenty or happy moments, or in the midst of difficulty, of challenges, but for as long as we are directed, influenced by God's word, it says here, he prospers. But then look at the, 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 the opposite. Look at the person who doesn't have any regard to God's word. What does the Bible say about this person? It says the wicked are not. The wicked will not experience the very same things that the person who delights in my word will experience. Instead, they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Why? For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The way of the wicked will perish. And that is why it is very, very important that we, as we take this journey with the Lord day by day into Christian maturity, that we take hold of His Word from day to day. That we begin to take His Word seriously, that whatever impressions He gives us, we, we journal them. We write them in our own notebooks and, and, say, and say, God told me or God impressed in my heart these very thoughts and these very insights and, and these very learnings they 
And we continue to just read them, continue to pray to the Lord and say, Lord, what, Lord, what are you teaching me through this? And begin to just see life through that. See, it's very important that we keep that in our own journals. But rather, more important is that what the psalmist has, has said in, in Psalm chapter 100, 119, verse 11. Here's something that he has chosen to do in his life early on. He says in Psalm chapter 119, verse 11, these very words about you know, his regard to God's word. He says, Thy word, or your word, O God, I have treasured in my heart. I have kept your word in my heart. That I took your word seriously, that I didn't want to even forget it, that I kept it in my heart. Or close to say, like, I memorized them, you know. I, I put them in my heart, in my mind, and I memorized them. So that I may not sin against you. And so, see, part of our own training and developing a, an essential habit of being a disciple or follower is to also memorize God's Word. We memorize part of scriptures, even as the Lord teaches us important lessons through that we will memorize that so that whatever comes our way, whatever circumstance or experience comes our way, suddenly there's always something that we can draw from that would remind us of God's perfect word and perfect view of things and perfect promises and perfect instruction on how we should respond to all this. And so we memorize God's word. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 has this verse to say. It says, let the word of Christ, let the word of Christ, all of scripture, richly dwell within you. And so we don't just let it pass by and say like, oh, that was wonderful. I learned something there. It says, let it dwell in you. Let it stay there in your being. You know, and one of the first few important steps we can do that is to memorize it. And as we memorize it, we begin to just have it sink deep down in our hearts richly. And as it dwells there, it begins to influence the way we view things, the way we view people, the way we view life in, as a whole. And it begins to influence the way we live life. And so it says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom. And then we also end up not what? Being trainers of others by teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. See, we, as a result, we also end up being trainers of others to do the very same thing. But see, if enough of that for now let us first understand we can never be teachers without first becoming doers we cannot effectively share with others what God's word means to us and how it begins to transform our lives and begins to make us pursue life as God desires for us to pursue in a fruitful way in a profitable way without us first applying it to our very own life so let's get back to what it calls for us to be doing. It says, let the word of Christ richly dwell in you. There's a purpose for it being there. And that is for it to influence the way we live our lives. So that transformation can truly begin to be experienced in our lives. See, speaking about dwelling, it just reminds me of some people who had some negative, some painful experience in the past, that such a painful experience has remained in their minds and such a pain has dwelt, they're allowed to dwell in their hearts. That it's almost common sense to say, no wonder, though the experience is long gone, the painful experience has long been perhaps uh, forgotten in history, but for these people, because they've allowed it to dwell in their hearts, 
It influences the way they see things and people and even wonderful opportunities that come their way. But they look through it, they look at it through eyes of fear, of hurt, of pain. And it influences the way they respond to it. The same idea is applied to the Word of God. But see here, we, we, we have Christ's words, the Bible, dwell in our hearts all so richly. So as it dwells there, we begin to see and perceive and receive experiences of life as God desires for us to do so. And there it begins to transform us, transform our thinking, transform our feelings, transform our very own actions, and, and make us live the kind of life that God desires for us to live. Well, I think we've covered so much ground today. The very basic challenge is that for us to take God's word seriously. And because it is given by God for our own benefit, God's word himself is perfect. It has the ability to transform us as it gives us wisdom to see things the way he desires for us to see. But it calls for us to obey it. The word of God is right. It is not erroneous. It is there for the good of each and every one of us for as long as we take it seriously and obey. And as we do so, it has the capacity to make us happy. What better way then to value God's word than to commune with him daily and, 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 and have his word dwell in our hearts so that we begin to be influenced as we live this life and truly experience the joy, the blessedness that God has purposed for you to experience in this very journey with Him. And so, I'll see you next time as we continue on our journey together. God bless you.